Did you know that there's only one correct interpretation of every single Bible verse? And even in conservative churches, people are looking at me like, wait, what? Uh (laughs) And I say, Um, when it comes to the objective meaning of the text, I think the main thing that there's like there's like these two different approaches. And Monique, you kind of touched on it, like talking about the Israelites in Egypt, you know, and how that might mean something sort of specific or m- maybe even have a more meaningful sort of application for, say, a black person or something like that. That's really a different question, even than what the objective meaning of the text is, because there can be an a, there is an objective meaning of every text. This blows people's minds when I say this in conferences. I'll say to people, did you know that there's only one correct mm-hmm interpretation of every single Bible verse. And even in conservative churches, people are looking at me like, wait, what? <laughs> uh-huh. And I say, and I know I don't claim to know what it is in absolutely every case. I'm fallible. But my goal and your goal should not be to just, you know, rush to the application, but we should first try to to figure out what the author intended to communicate. And for that, we have words, right? That's the best we've got. But since the 60s, we have the deconstruction of text. And I, I I bring this bell all the time, but that's because I think it's a huge bell that people don't realize is ringing. And that's the Jacques Derrida bell, right? He was uh-huh. referred to as the father of deconstruction. He didn't believe that words could be pinned down to singular meanings. And so therefore, the intent of the author had no more bearing on the meaning than the interpretation of the reader or the hearer, right? So that's and we're, that's what everybody's doing now. And so we're, we're like to take your example, Monique, of, of how the story of the Israelites in Egypt might mean something or might even, I would grant, have a meaningful application for a black person, but it's not going to mean something different than it meant originally. Right. So here's an example. Just I'll swing this into my own context. Um, when I went to the Cross-Examined Instructor Academy in 2016, uh, I had this amazing experience where Jay Warner Wallace and Frank Turk were just affirming me and they were saying, you know, you need to be doing this. And I hadn't even started a blog yet. And really, that was the springboard that led me into apologetics. And I'll never forget going back to my niece's house. I was spending the night at her house and that scripture of Mary being, you know, after she got the revelation that she was going to be the father, the mother of Jesus, saying she treasured all these things in her heart. Now, that passage came to my mind. And it sort of had a special application to me in that moment, because I remember relating with it and thinking she treasured all these things in her heart. It was like there was so much I couldn't communicate to people, but I was treasuring them in in my heart. Now, at the same time, that doesn't mean that that verse means that Elisa Childers was going to have this moment, you know, in Southern California where she, you know, that's not what that verse is about. Right. So we have to keep the objective meaning in view. And then there can be different applications uh, for for someone's individual journey or what they might relate with. And that's where we can learn from each other, certainly. But it can't divorce itself from what the text actually means. And so I think that's the biggest thing where, Krista, I'm I'm with you. I wish somebody would do some really good work on this, where I think so many Christians, we do need to get, you know, somebody to do some PhD work or something in that topic. But also just even on the lay level, I think the average Christian needs to learn the difference Mm -hmm. between interpretation and application. Those are two very different things. Mm -hmm.